the ABCs, the fundamentals of faith. Fundamentals, I am going to open my Bible to the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. You do realize that, don't you? <laughs> if yours is like mine, it kind of falls open there. <laughs> and um, now, why? Why is God so interested? Why is Jesus so interested in teaching, preaching, talking about faith? Faith is a spiritual force. We've talked about this a lot of times, many times but I'm gonna take a, a moment and, and touch on it again because it is the basic fundamental of it. Let me give you these so you can write them down because we won't be able to cover them all tonight. <clears throat> number one, the, the number one fundamental of faith. You believe it in your heart, then you say it with your mouth. Now the phrase, the word of faith, which we preach is in the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. <clears throat> With the heart man believes and with the mouth, let's just turn there. 10th chapter of the book of Romans. Don't lose your place there in Mark 11. <clears throat> Verse six, the righteousness which is of faith speaketh. The righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise. Say not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. What does it say? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach in your heart and in your mouth, in your heart and in your mouth. The word of faith which we preach, that if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus or Jesus is Lord and shall believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Actually, the word is sozo. You shall be saved, you shall be healed. Same word, means exactly the same thing. <clears throat> That's an interesting word study sometimes. Just, just, just read through, particularly the, the, the letters, and find that word so-so. It's an eye opener in the healing ministry. It would have stopped small wars. <laughs> <laughs> and people just know, right to, well, healing passed away. Well, Sozo passed away. Think of that. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> for here it is with the heart, with the spirit, the inner man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto Sozo, unto salvation heart and mouth. You believe it in your heart, then say it with your mouth. Now then, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> let's go to the book of Matthew. Have, let, me, let me finish reading this in, in Mark 11, 23. Have the faith of God, have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says, those words that he says, will come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith, therefore I say. So he put it into operation immediately. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive and you will have. 
And you've heard Gloria say this many, 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 many times. That word translated receive is exactly the word that means to take. Well, of course it does. The only time people don't understand that is in church. <laughs> receive, take, same thing. Every passer needs a good receiver. My son, Jonathan, is a quarterback and a good one, but he's no better than the receiver. Now, Jonathan is one of those young men, the, his um, eye hand coordination is just really good. I'm not just cause he's my grandson. I mean, I'm, I'm quoting his press. He's just one of those guys and he's totally committed himself to that game. And he, he believes God has called him and he has, has called him into that field to coach and to, to, to be a part of, of young, young men and their spiritual growth. So he was just as good a basketball player as he was a football player. And so he, but he just walked away from it. His coach cried when he quit basketball. So did his, so, so did his mother. No, he said, I, I must concentrate on this. This is what God called me to do. I must concentrate on this, on, on, on this. This is what I must do. So he and his receiver have to practice together because when that ball is anywhere close, that receiver has to take that thing. Amen. Amen. He has to take it. I can take this. And Gloria said it isn't yours till you take it. And believe you take it. Believe you have it. Believe you receive it. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any. All of that is one statement. This is fundamentals of faith. And I've, I've had people say this to me, not in a long time, but uh, particularly back in the early days, when so many people had never heard anything like this about, well, <clears throat> now Brother Copeland, uh, that was a spiritual mountain and uh, a spiritual fig tree. Really? Well, Let's check that out in the 21st chapter of Matthew, the 21st verse. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do that which is done to this fig tree, you shall not only do that that was done to this fig tree, but you say to that mountain, praise God, that settled that question. Now then, and of course we've, we've already covered some of these, <clears throat> these other places in the book of Romans and so forth. Faith, now then, Mark chapter five, Now, I'll go ahead and give you background on this. <clears throat> Those of you that are not familiar, if there is anybody that's not. Kenneth Hagin was born in August of 1917. Extremely prematurely. They were, they were frightened for the life of his mother. And that's obvious they induced labor thinking that she's, she's going to die and we're going to lose her and the baby too. So, <clears throat> and he was born and his grandmother, his grandfather was a doctor on the other side of the family. And so she had worked with him 
so much and, and had been a nurse to him that she was, you know, she, she really knew what she was doing. And uh, <clears throat> thank you, excuse me. He was so small when he was born. Fully dressed, he weighed less than two pounds. Just supernaturally that he lived. And it went to suggest the route that they said it would. They said, you'll, you'll, then you'll get paralyzed. You'll get to where you can't see and then you'll, you'll die. And he said, I knew somehow, some way that it was right there in that 11th chapter of Mark. I, I, I knew that, that my, my, my healing was there. He said, I, 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 I dealt with that for 17 months. or excuse me, 16 months on that bed. And he said, I finally saw it. I finally saw it. I have to believe it before I have it. I have to believe that it's mine. I have to believe when I pray that I'm healed, not after I feel something that I'm healed. Anybody can believe that. I have to believe it now while I'm paralyzed. I have to believe it now while I can just barely see. <clears throat> and finally that morning, that morning in 1934, the Lord said, so you believe you're healed. He said, I sure do. He said it out loud. I sure do. He said, heal people ought to be up this time of day. <laughs> so he said, I started getting up. Yeah. And he said, I couldn't feel anything from the waist down. And so he said, I, I worked myself over onto the side of the bed. And he said, my hands were partially paralyzed. And he said, I just just threw my legs out on the floor. Now he's just skin and bones. Now fully dressed, he only weighed 89 pounds. And, but he just threw his legs out. He said, I couldn't feel it when they hit the floor, just like two chunks of wood. And he said, I slid off there. And he said, I grabbed around the bedpost. And he said, I want to announce <laughs> to Almighty God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, all the angels in this room and every devil in hell, I'm healed. Praise God. I'm healed. I, I'm healed. And he said, all of a sudden, I began to get feeling in my legs. And he said, he said it, 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 he said it hurt so bad. He said it felt like 10,000 needles being stuck in my, he said those nerves are coming back to life. And he said, I began to cry. And he said, I'm, I'm, he said, I'm, I'm crying cause I can feel it. I'm crying cause I can feel it. I cause it, he said it hurt good. And his heart that just didn't beat right at all. His doctor told him, for you to live, we would have to replace everything in your chest, your heart, your lungs, all your plumbing. He asked him, he said, why is it if I drank something cold, it goes in, but he said, I feel it coming all the way over here before it goes to my stomach. He said, you, 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 you didn't completely, you're so deformed on the inside. Think about what a miracle that was. And he believed it in his heart and he said it with his mouth. And in a moment's time, he was standing up with his arms up, praising God, walking around that room. walking around the room. Now he was in a meeting and uh, 
there was, it was after the service and the, the, the pastor and his wife and the, their family and, and all of them, all faith people and they've been in the meeting and all of them together there. And he said, just the strongest, just the urge, just an, almost a burden to pray. And he told them, he said, I've got to pray and I've got to pray now. They said, all right, we'll just pray with you. And he said, we just, everybody just hit the floor and started praying in the spirit. And he said, I know, he said, my knees hit that floor and there was Jesus in the spirit. And he started talking to me and he talked to me about some things. And, and then, he, and then, he, then I said, uh, Lord Jesus, I want to ask you about a couple of my messages. He said, all right. He said, the woman with the issue of blood, I, I, I've got a message here about her and her saying it and, and so forth. And I, seems like I'm missing part of that message. He said, you are. <laughs> and he said something like, uh, my spirit's been trying to get this over to you for quite some time. And he said, uh, write this down. When he said, I had to, he said, I went into my bedroom. I was staying in the parsonage there with the pastor. And he said, I went in the bedroom and he said, I got pencil in just a card there. And he said, I still have it. But he said, I got back there and got on my knees and there was Jesus. And he said, now write down these four things. And he said, it's amazing how well you can write with your eyes shut when you're in the spirit. <laughs> One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. She Number one, the Lord said, number one, she said it. Number two, she did it. Weymouth translation of the New Testament in the book of James calls for corresponding action. Yes. She did it. She said it, she believed it, she did it, and she told it. He said, anybody, any of my children at any time that will do these things can receive anything they want or anything they need from me. Just those four things. She said it, she believed it, she did it, and she told it, she testified to it. Those four things. So when we, let, let's go there now. And faith will not work in an unforgiving heart. In the fifth chapter of the book of Mark, verse 25, a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years, she's been shut in for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. She touched his prayer shawl. She touched his garment for she said, if I may touch his clothes. I shall be whole. 
and straightway, immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and then she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Amen. So now she heard of Jesus. Well, like I said this morning in our partner service, he preached that sermon, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and so forth and so on. Poor man, you don't have to be poor anymore. I'm here. Blind man, you don't have to be blind anymore. I'm here. Captive man, drug addict, you don't have to be bound up and captive anymore. I'm here. And he preached the acceptable year of the Lord, which was supernatural debt cancellation. So there you have it. Teach, preach, and heal. <laughs> Amen. She heard that. She, she's got someone relaying messages because he lives right down the street. He lives in Capernaum and this was in Capernaum. And he, you know, they just had scouts out looking for him. He's got, he's got to come home sometime. And well, when he does, we love him so. So, Spencer, she must have forgiven those doctors. Hmm. Yeah. Twelve years. Twelve years. She's been shut in. Check it out in the book of Leviticus. Fifth, sixth, seventh chapters of the book of Leviticus. She was unclean. A woman with an issue of blood beyond her normal time she was, she was shut in. You couldn't go out in public. And you, you, you were considered really in the same category with a leper. You were unclean and you just stay inside. You just don't come out here. So they, she just couldn't go out. Don't you know that got old? 12 long years, she's skin and bones, bleeding all the time. Had all that time to think about all those doctors and I used to have money and now I don't. Bunch of quacks. <laughs> Obviously she didn't. She'd heard enough about hearing about Jesus to forgive. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.